he's a commentator for ESPN. Uh, he's been doing it for a lot of years now, and he's become recognized as one of the leading voices for all things boxing, from being a world-class trainer to an enormously popular commentator. And we are extremely proud to say wow. that we have him with us tonight. He's always hard-hitting. He's a Staten Island native, and we're proud to say we welcome in Teddy Atlas. Teddy. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Pleasure to have you on. That's pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> Teddy, let's, let's, let's just start there. That happened just a couple of days ago. You're at the uh, MGM. You're, at, you're in Vegas. You're doing the fight. The fight ends. And just a, just a quick story as to show you what the, the, the social networking, how big it is. I'm on Twitter and I'm kind of talking to Yankee fans and just talking baseball and all of a sudden your comments start going viral. But I don't know what you're saying yet, but your name jumps out at me because I know we're going to be interviewing you within a couple of days. And people are commenting and they're saying, Teddy is the man. If I don't listen to anything anybody says in boxing because I don't trust it, but if Teddy says it, I believe it. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, I'm searching around to see what happened. So what happened was there was a controversial uh, decision. It was a majority, but not a unanimous decision. When we searched around to look for your comments, your passion came through. Not so much, uh, the anger was coming out at a particular judge, but your anger to us seemed more like your love for the game and the individual that uh, was treated unfairly and that's what came pouring out. So if you can, just kind of give us a little bit of a backdrop to that. Well, I've been fighting uh, to try to get a national commission. I actually went down to Washington some years ago with Senator McCain at the time and talked about putting together a national commission to look out for boxing and the rights of fighters. Uh, we're the only sport that doesn't have a national commission with any real, true oversight uh, and enforceable laws to make sure that things like this doesn't happen. I mean, you've got the NBA, you got NFL, you have MLB, and they all have national commissions. You know, they have structure in place. They have oversight in place, mechanisms in place to make sure that uh, the sport is properly administrated and the credibility is kept for the fans and, of course, the participants are looked out for. And there's no participant, no athlete that should be looked out for more. And I respect all athletes, but and there's no athlete that should be looked out for more than one who gets inside that squared circle are, because are there, are there there's so forces, much on the line. There's, so, there's such risk. Are there forces that are against having a commission like that? Well, it yeah, seems I mean, like it's a no-brainer. So, it's the Wild West right now. I mean, it's been that way. Boxing's been around longer than any other sport. Mm -hmm. It used to be the biggest sport in this country right. and um, bigger than baseball, which is the national pastime. And it's, you can trace it back to the Greeks. It goes back 200 years. Um, it's... It, never had any formal structure. It has local commissions, but they all have different rules and no uniform, unilateral conformity to make sure that laws are adhered to and that people are held accountable. So I, I've been using my form on ESPN. I've been doing ESPN Friday Night Fights now for 17 years, and I use it to try to fight that fight, to try to look out for the fighters. Uh, like I said, they put themselves at risk every time they get in that ring. They don't know if they're going to get out of that ring as whole as they went into it. So when this judge, C.J. Ross, had a majority decision where I f looked very at ringside as I was doing the fight for ESPN and to broadcast uh, afterwards to do the post-fight for Sports Center, I was looking as hard as I could to find a round to give to Alvarez. I gave him one round, so I had 11 to 1. Maybe. Maybe I could have gave two rounds. I gave the last round to Alvarez. Possibly I could have gave, I made a mark on my score sheet. I could have gave the second round to him. But I added 11 to 1. And when she came out with her insulting and ludicrous, outrageous scorecard of having it an even fight, uh, I was upset. And I wanted to, I said that she should be taken out on, on, in handcuffs. Uh, th those were my exact remarks. I said, you know, this was uh, an attempted burglary, not a full burglary, because they didn't take the title away from him. But it just speaks to the problems that it can only be two things. You know, it can't be five things. It could be incompetence, which would be pretty severe, or it can be corruption. And I don't think anyone could be that incompetent. And I think that 
it's the money, the money. It's corruption. Mm -hmm. That Golden Boy has Alvarez, and if Alvarez wins the fight, they don't control Mayweather. They get a fee from Mayweather to put the show together, but they don't control him. They don't make as much money. So if Alvarez wins, Golden Boy, one of the power brokers like Aram with top rank, there's only a few of them that run boxing, that carry the weight, carry the strength, the power. If if Alvarez wins, they stand to make much more money. And this might have been the most lucrative fight in the history of the sport. We still didn't get all the numbers down, but it's going to be one of the most lucrative, if not the most lucrative. So if Alvarez wins, they make a lot more money. And guess what? There's no separation of church and state. What do I mean by that? There's no separation between the people who supposedly administrate the sport and who make money in the sport. There's no separation. So they, they can have relationships with, the, they're the promoter, they can have relationships with the organizations, the sanctioning organizations, the commissions, the people who put the judges in place, and they can influence, with that relationship, they can influence who those judges are. And it shouldn't be that way. You know what that would be compared to in, in baseball? That would be compared to having the ability, the night before, I've walked into restaurants the night before a big fight, and I've actually seen a table that looked like the Last Supper with the best wine, the best food, the best steaks, the best lobsters, and I see the whole organization, all the refs, all the judges, all the officials who are gonna be officiating the fight the next night, and I see him sitting at the table, and you know who's hosting the dinner? The promoter. Mm -hmm. The guy who has a vested interest in who's going to win the fight the next day. Now, could you see that? Could you ever see that in baseball the night before the Yankees are going to play for the World Series? Could you ever envision a scenario where the Steinbrenners are going to be hosting a dinner with the umpiring crew? Should no, be. it's not allowed. There's a structure in place for a reason to make sure that that could never, that impropriety or that look of impropriety right. could never happen because it would destroy the credibility of the sport. And, and in this case, it's allowed to happen, and that's something I've been fighting against for a long time. Nice. Well, just to kind of sum up the whole conversation and to prove that you do pack quite a punch mm -hmm. yourself, initially, after your tirade that night, and it was a tirade, but... Calculated, you, thought out one. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, because what happened was Right after that, the Nevada State Athletic Commission defended Judge C.J. Rust initially. But what you did is you started something grassroots, just like we were talking about with social media. Everybody rallied around and everybody said, I have two eyes, I saw it also. Teddy's right, Teddy's the only one saying it, and he's right. And what you did is you created something, so tell us what the, what the bottom line net net result was. Well, C.J. Ross was forced to step down. I mean, you know, she resigned uh, indefinitely, and hopefully it's going to be definitely, and it's not going to be indefinitely. But um, she stepped down, and with, with some urging and pushing from uh, the people that were helping her, or at least uh, on her side. You're too that, humble. That it, was because, it was because it was because of you. You know. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> we're going to go over to our next 